I met a bunch of guys in Hoi An during my trip to Vietnam last summer. After a few beers, they managed to talk me into extending my stay another day and doing the Hai Van Pass with them on motorcycles. So Dan whips out his map and the route is Hoi An greater than Danang greater than Hai Van Pass greater than Hue. All four of us booked from different operators, but somehow our bikes had matching LV embossed seat covers. We take some photos and don matching tropical fruit print t-shirts to commemorate the whole thing and set off at 9.30 am. Everything was fine until we got onto the motherfucking mountain. One of the guys got a flat tire halfway up the motherfucking mountain and we were stuck. We couldn't go up or down because it was way too dangerous and there were many trucks going up and down that road. We didn't want to risk anything. So 10 minutes pass and we're baking under the hot sun, wondering what we should do. He called the operator but the operator literally said something like, there's nothing we can do. At this point, we're like okay. We know we're pretty much fucked. But the deposit for the bike was pretty hefty and we couldn't just leave the bike there right? Tbh though we did seriously consider that after baking for an hour in the hot sun. We didn't do it only because a guy in a motorcycle pulled up in front of us. Initially, we thought it was one of the operator's friends, that they pulled through and managed to send someone down. But then we never told the operator where we were so that was highly unlikely. Anyway, so this Vietnamese dude comes around, doesn't speak a single word of English beyond telling us how much the repair would cost. He suggested replacing the tire but it was like the same price as renting the bike for the trip so we're like no. And he eventually settled on taping the puncture in the tire for us. My poor friend had to inflate the tire by himself even haha, I have a great photo of that. So that's done and we continue up the mountain. The Vietnamese repairman decides to escort us up. To this day I'll never know why. But thank god he did because about 5 minutes later my poor friend's tire was flat again. At this point, I was close to losing it. Turns out there was a nail in the tire and patching it with tape won't fix it, duh. So like the Vietnamese dude tapes it back up and gets us to go down the hill, help, to find a mechanic. So we do that. When we're back in Da Nang, he waltzes into the first house he sees, talks to the guy in rapid Vietnamese and then bam. Problem solved. I was pretty happy because they let me refill my water bottle there. And we thought he deserved it because he did get an operator that was cheaper. With the bill for the repairs, he ended up paying the same rate the rest of us did haha. After several hours baking in the sun and one new tire later, the four of us continue on our journey back up High Van Pass. It's already midday but the show must go on and we're pretty hungry. Vietnamese dude follows us up the mountain, I guess it's on the way for him, and when we finally reach the top, he motions for us to follow him to this little place for lunch. Excellent unobstructed view of Vietnam's coastal scenery and cheap lunch meal. At some point, I think we were scared that the whole thing was a scam that would culminate during lunch but we were too tired at that point to give a damn. Besides, it was Vietnam. DL, Doctor, even though it went all sorts of ways, the High Van Pass was the most memorable of all the solo trips I've made in Southeast Asia the past two years. Even more memorable was how I was so proud of myself for not getting into an accident the whole day, only to hurt my toe and lose a toenail just before arriving at the hostel. Walked around with a bloody toe for the rest of that trip.